Um, now, I try to be strict with time. We are delaying the live showcase 10 minutes so that Dr. Maria Elena Botazzi, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, you <laughs> um, can speak just very briefly on Corbivax. Um, uh, I only know that Dr. Botazzi uh, is associated with the Baylor School of Medicine and um, the Tropical Disease Center there. I believe they have developed what might be called an open source vaccine. That might be a little unfair, but she's going to explain it to us. Um, we're going to hear from her briefly, and then after that, we'll come back here, and I'll mention that we're all going to go back to Rehive. Possibly Dr. Botazzi will also make herself available there. She hasn't had a chance to practice with that, so I, I don't know if that's going to happen. Thank you very much. Take it away, uh, Dr. Botazzi. Thank you, Rob, and it's amazing uh, all that you all are doing. So I'm not gonna, you know, um, spend a lot of time thanking everybody, but here it is. I'm gonna tell you that story of our decolonizing vaccine development approach, which is of course, you know, open technology, mass production, low cost, and our story about the success of what we were able to do. But uh, more importantly is to recognize that this is a map, in fact, that the colors reflect all the regions where we still have unvaccinated people around the world. So therefore we really need to continue doing this because if not, we're gonna continue having variants. We need additional doses. We need additional doses for boosters. We need pediatric uh, vaccinations. We need broader and long-term protection vaccines. And we also need vaccines that could hopefully protect us for the unknown in the future. Um, if you look at the spectrum of everything that was from the beginning of the pandemic focused on, as you notice, is all either um, RNA technology, adenovirus technologies, and unfortunately, even the protein-based technology, even the Novavax, which is a version of a protein, but it's a particle protein, still, as you can uh, maybe uh, hear, is there, it's not really very much widely used. Um, so we, as many, have been trying to bring to the um, table another option, which is actually a very conventional option, which is very simple protein-based vaccines that we knew even from the days of SARS and MERS, um, they would be um, efficacious and safe, but for one reason or another that uh, we can all speculate have not been given the attention necessary. What makes them very unique is that they are very simple to, um, to engineer. They take a little long, but they're simple to engineer. And then most important is that we have all the infrastructure for these types of products to already established, even in some locations in the global south. They're low cost, they're reproducible, they're robust, they're limitless with regards to production. The technology therefore is a little bit easier to take transfer and to learn. Uh, we have all the assays, uh, usually they're very uh, uh, orthogonal, meaning that they're very established and the regulators already know how to evaluate the assays to establish quality and stability. Um, and in fact, stability wise, these uh, types of proteins, uh, vaccines can last uh, stored for many even years and they use very simple cold chain um, um, uh, storage conditions. And importantly, of course, is that we have even had precedent of their safety and efficacy uh, with, for example, hepatitis B, human papillomavirus vaccines, and even pertussis vaccines. So we actually had a year long uh, experience already building prototypes for these types of vaccines. We have a, a portfolio of what we call neglected um, disease types of vaccines. And we actually consider coronavirus as being neglected because after the 20, 11, 2016 uh, frame uh, time period, uh, nobody really cared about coronaviruses anymore. And so they, they basically became neglected diseases. Um, so we started working on those with our aspiration again of developing open science, um, easy to translate and transfer um, and build capacity for vaccine development with this program and all the publications then led us to in the COVID-19 space um, being able to engineer, and we use the yeast expression system as our starter kit. Uh, we produce these cell banks. We, of course, have the recipes of then how to use these starter kits to make the proteins that are, of course, the basis of the vaccine. We have all the assays to establish quality and stability. 
we have and test this functionality, of course, and then we share widely. We publish and therefore we don't patent and we share widely with anybody that would like to either work with us or even just um, take our data and our processes and reproduce our scientific work. So the way that we therefore envision this is by, again, we design in the US, of course, in our labs, but we do it with very strict criteria for technical and scientific underpinnings, um, uh, keeping very high quality documentation that makes these discoveries regulatory enabling and therefore easy to translate into a, a what we call critical path development. We of course use the same business practices as if we were a big multinational or pharmaceutical entity except we do it as Peter Hotel says money losing guaranteed uh, and we of course have a project timeline management and so the the success has been a snowball effect starting with biological e biopharma now in Indonesia in SEPTA in Bangladesh immunity bio who's uh, setting infrastructure in South Africa. And this is basically my story. And I'll just leave you with a few faces of our team that is behind the scenes of creating this so-called you know, open source, patent free, uh, free for everyone technology. Thank you, Rob. Um, so thank you. I, I, I'm almost speechless. Uh, you know, I can't commend you enough for having done this. It reminds me of, of the polio vaccine development, which was you know, not patented and given to the world, uh, partly out of pure altruism because people believed it was important enough. Thank you very much. Um, so not being a uh, wetware scientist myself, I'm a computer scientist. If, um, if a nation you know, wanted to use this, what do they have to do? They have to partner with you uh, and and work with your laboratory, or can they just take all of this stuff and do it in their own laboratory? Look, if they read our publications, it's no brainer. It's very generic technology. We even publish how we did the engineering, and so, so I, I can, can do, do it here in my laboratory if I you knew how to do it. it in your laboratory. If you know how to do cloning, how to use yeast, how to make yeast, you know, in the laboratory, makes protein, formulate them, and then do animal studies. Now, there's a value of doing it with us because of course we have very you know high level reports and data and then we can share the accountability so the idea is doing it um, the fastest as possible so co-developing with us is usually the fastest way to enable the producer okay i know you're extremely busy thank you very much for joining us dr botazi i'd like to say i'm a little embarrassed for my fellow humanitarian engineers because what we've just seen is Dr. Botazi at the most sophisticated level developing a new vaccine being successful and open source medical supplies at the least sophisticated level developing masks and gowns and face shields being successful and my team in the middle making ventilators and oxygen concentrators uh, so far drawing a zero and scoring nil we haven't saved any lives to speak of nonetheless we're going to keep working at it um, you know, one of the things that I think all of us have to do is be patient and do the dedicated work necessary to achieve success. So thank you very much, Dr. Batazzi. Um, Sabia, are you here? Can you come uh, turn your camera on? Yeah. Um, so yeah. before we go to the live showcase, I would like to present Sabia Abadi with a Public Invention Award as well. This says Public Invention Most Active Board Member presented to Sabia Avedi for the Respiricon 2 conference and mentoring opportunities, which will oh, eventually so be- so kind. Admitted. No, that's so kind of, it's my pleasure to work with you and the team. So this is, this is just so much fun. Thank you so much.